Hello, future engineer. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series on Code with Connor. This is lesson number 15, where we're going to use an LCD screen to display temperature and humidity values based on a temperature humidity sensor. So let's get started with the wiring. For this lesson, I'm using a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. These come in a three pin and a four pin model. In each case, I'm still only going to wire up three of the pins. And it allows me to get a decent reading on the temperature and the humidity inside of a room. Reading from left to right on the humidity sensor. The left pin is going to go to voltage. Next pin, the second pin in, is going to go to our Arduino board. I currently have this one going to pin number seven. And then the third or final pin, depending on whether you have a three pin or a four pin, will go to the ground. If you have a four pin DHT sensor, it's the third from the left that you'll skip. Okay, and the final pin will go to ground like I have in the diagram. That's all the wiring we need for the sensor. Just like in a previous lesson, we're gonna wire up our LCD display using an I2C chip. Ground goes to the ground row, the VCC goes to the voltage row, our SDA, our data pin is going to A4, and our SCL, our clock pin, is going to A5. So this is what our wiring setup is gonna look like in order for our sensor to be able to read in temperature and humidity values from the room and our LCD screen to connect to our code so that we can eventually print those values out to the screen. Now that the wiring is all done, we're gonna jump over to the code and figure out how to write the code for this project. So here we are in our coding interface. I've created a new file for lesson number 15 where we're gonna display temperature and humidity values on an LCD screen. To start things off, we need to bring in a few libraries in order to work with both our LCD screen as well as with our DHT sensor. For the DHT library, I can do dht.h and dht underscore u.h for universal. These are two DHT libraries. If you look it up through the library section on the Arduino web interface, these will be the ones that will automatically pull into your code when you search for DHT. Our same library, our Liquid Crystal I2C library that we used earlier uh, to bring in the library needed to work with our LCD display. Now that we have our libraries in, let's put in the code to initialize our LCD display. And this is the code we used earlier liquid crystal underscore I2C, which is our library, call this one LCD, and then 0x27, 20, and 4 helps set it up as a 16 by 2 line display, which is what our standard LCD display is. Next up, we're going to set up the pins and initialize our sensor. So I'm going to define a DHT pin as 7 and define DHT type as DHT11, and then I set up my DHT object, DHT, DHT, using the pin and the type. So now lowercase dht can be used when referencing our sensor and lowercase lcd can be used when referencing our screen. So this has set up all of the initial functionality with our libraries and our sensor and our screen that we can now jump into our setup function and begin writing our own code. First thing we're going to do inside of our setup function is initialize our uh, screen and our sensor. To initialize our screen, like in the previous lesson, lcd.init followed by lcd.backlight. Okay, this sets it up as ready to print values to it and turns the backlight on on the LCD display. The sensor uses a begin function, so dht.begin, to initialize the sensor. So it's now ready to read values. And finally, in our setup function, we'll, we'll print some basic debug and intro statements out to our serial monitor just to use for debugging and understanding how our sensor is reading values. So I will begin my serial monitor, wait half of a second, the system to boot up and then I'm going to print DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor backslash n backslash n now this is a new line character backslash n so that forces our serial monitor to jump down to a new line kind of like pressing enter so by adding those inside the quotation marks can jump extra lines it's good for formatting things sometimes and then delay one second before we actually go into our loop function this is just an initialization uh, set of print statements. Now we're ready to write the actual code to read our temperature sensor and then display those values on our screen. So in order to read the values from our sensor, we need to use some functions that are built into our library. In particular, read humidity and read temperature. So these are going to return what's called a float value, which is a decimal value, a decimal varial type. So float h is going to be set equal to dht.readHumidity. I'm creating my own variable h, which is of type float, and I'm going to store the return from read humidity into that value. I have float T is going to be dht.read temperature. Now by default, this is going to return the temperature in Celsius, which is what we want. You can actually pass a true value, a Boolean statement like true, into that, which will make it return the value in Fahrenheit instead of in Celsius. For us, we're going to keep it as Celsius. 
So at this point, H and T should have our humidity and temperature stored in them, but we need to verify that it actually read the values properly from the sensor. Okay, so we're going to use a function and an if statement to check this. So let's read through this. If is nan, I S N A N, humidity, or is nan T. So is nan is a built in function in Arduino, which stands for is not a number. So if H is somehow not a numerical value, then this will fail the if statement. If temperature is not a numerical number, then this if statement will fail. So if either one of these turns out to be true, that temperature or humidity is not a number, then it will print failed to read from the sensor and it will return, which just exits this particular loop and lets the loop function recall over again. So this is just a way of checking that it actually read numerical values from the sensor properly. So now that we've done that, now we're ready to print the values out. We've already confirmed they are in fact numerical values. So we're gonna print it to two places. We're gonna print it to our serial monitor and we're gonna print it to our LCD screen. So let's start with humidity. To print humidity to the serial monitor, I do a serial.print current humidity equals a serial.print H and then a serial.print line percentage and another couple of spaces. So this should print current humidity equals the actual number followed by a percentage sign. To print the humidity to the LCD display, I set my cursor to the top row left hand side, print HUM equals and a space, print the humidity value, print a percentage sign. Okay, I have less characters to work with, so you'll notice I didn't write the entire word humidity. So that should print our humidity to serial and our humidity to the LCD. Let's repeat that process for temperature. To print the temperature to the serial, temperature equals, print T. Now this is a little special. Uh, in Arduino, we can use the Unicode value for the degree symbol. So this is UTF-8, which is backslash X capital C2, backslash X capital B0. And this will put the degree symbol into our serial monitor and then the C for Celsius. So this is just for formatting thing. You can look these kind of things up online. You can look like Unicode or ASCII value for a degree symbol, and you can find the print codes as to what you would put there to print those characters. So I wanted to try that. It's a different character on the LCD because again, the way that it's being written is using a different formatting style. So I set the cursor to the second row, left-hand side, print temp, print the temperature, and then this one uses a char value, an ASCII char value for 223, which is the degree symbol, and then C for Celsius. Okay, so this will print my temperature to serial, print my temperature to LCD, and then I wanna wait. I don't need it constantly trying to print all at the same time. I want to, you know, gather the temperature and humidity and then wait a few seconds. So I have it waiting five seconds. Then it'll read the temperature and humidity again and update the values uh, in our serial monitor and on our LCD display. So this code should read our value, make sure it's a valid value, print humidity to the LCD and the serial, print temperature to the LCD and serial, and then wait five seconds and do it all over again. Let's push it into the code and have a look at how it works. We'll start in the serial monitor so we can see on here what we're reading from our humidity sensor. So current humidity, value with a percentage, temperature, value with a degree symbol in Celsius, and you'll see every five seconds it's going to update. Room I'm in right now is 11% humidity, 24 degrees Celsius. Okay, and it's going to continue to update and we can see those values. Um, you can also play around like you could wrap your hand around the temperature sensor and see it go up. If we look at the LCD display, let me just bring this up for you so we can see humidity value, temperature value, and it updates as the serial monitor updates. Okay, and we get the degree symbol on there so it looks nice, works well. Great job with the base lesson. Hopefully you understand a little bit about how to read in values from the sensors. Now, if you don't happen to have a DHT11 temp and humidity sensor, if you look up whatever type of sensor you have on Google, you can usually find the libraries necessary and the basic initialization instructions necessary in order to modify this code to work with a different sensor. For the extension for this one, what we're gonna do is, if you remember, I was telling you about how you can add that true parameter into the read temperature value on the sensor to get the value in Fahrenheit. So if we have a look at my LCD here, you'll see that instead of it doing a new reading every five seconds, about every two and a half seconds, it's actually reading between or switching between a Celsius and a Fahrenheit reading for the temperature. 
So the humidity is still just in percentage values, but now it's displaying the humidity on one line and the temperature in Celsius two and a half seconds later, switches that to Fahrenheit, and then new reading Celsius, switch to Fahrenheit, and then new reading Celsius, switch to Fahrenheit, and so on. So that's what we're doing for the extension for this activity. Just gonna have to read in that extra value from the sensor using the true parameter, store it in a different variable, and then include that into our print line statement so that we can see it in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. And it's just a matter of having some delays in between the prints to the LCD screen. So we can see the print in Celsius, then a slight delay, then the print in Fahrenheit, uh, and then it'll redo the loop function, which will read new values and repeat the process again. So that's what we're looking at for the extension for lesson number 15. Hopefully the extension went well and you're now comfortable with adding in that new variable and using that read temperature function with the true or without the true parameter to get Celsius or Fahrenheit. For the challenge, I'm just gonna show you my LCD here so you have an idea what we're looking at. Now don't worry too much about the timing of it all, but just look at the format or the structure. So we've got humidity on the top line with a percentage, then it switches to temperature and it'll show both the Celsius and the Fahrenheit temperature underneath. And then it rotates back and forth. Maybe you want it a little slower, a little faster, but the idea there is about having that, again, that loop structure. So it'll display the humidity with the percentage value, then it'll switch over, display the temperature, and then the Celsius and Fahrenheit values. You may wanna make use of the lcd.clear method, which allows you to clear anything that's been printed to the LCD screen before you print new values out to the screen. You know, that could be helpful as well. Good luck with the challenge. I hope it goes well. I'm excited to see you back here in lesson number 16 for the Arduino Basics tutorial series. If you like what we're doing, please like the video, subscribe to our channel. My name is Adam. Have yourself a great day.